Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Set Your Day in Order with Bishop Howard V. Willis, Jr. Simply raise that story 
Because as we journey through this changing time, Sister Jennifer, as we journey through this pandemic, as we journey through this social unrest, I want you to still have hope. I still want you to be like the psalmist who says, I'm going to look unto the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord. Because when you lose up your hope, it will in fact in infect or affect your body's immune system. And I don't know about you, but with all that has happened, not just over these past few months, but when we look back over these last decade and even yet decades beyond that, it could be easy for one to lose hope especially if you are of my hue, especially if you are an African-American, especially if you are an African-American and male. You know, we all have seen the news and we have heard and we understand about Eric Garner who died because he was placed in a chokehold and he declared he couldn't breathe. And while even in New York that medical examiner declared it was a homicide, we know that the grand jury still did not convict. Even though in we look at the NYPD, when we look at their policies, the tactic of chokeholds was banned by that very department in the year of 1993, but we still see our brothers and even yet our sisters succumbing from police violence. We all saw about saw how Michael Brown, who was shot six times and laid in the street for hours that even yet his relatives would see him on TV laying in the street dead. We know about Trayvon Martin, that young black man who thought he had a long future uh, in front of him who was on his way home but was shot because he was followed by a gun-toting vigilante. We have just heard not too long ago about Ahmaud Aubrey, who was killed in February by an ex-police officer and by, who was who was accompanied with his son because they were as well were likewise like the man in Florida. They were gun-toting vigilantes. We heard about Breonna Taylor, who was in bed, and when she was shot, it was the result of Louisville detective serving a no-knock warrant in her home in March and it was in fact the wrong place. I tell you, these things can in fact have us to lose hope. We see all of the social unrest globally and people are rioting and people are protesting simply because of George Floyd who was just recently laid to rest this past week who even get repeated the eerie words of Eric Garner I can't breathe and even this weekend we're still bombarded with violence from police it was Rayshard Brooks in Atlanta on Friday evening early Saturday morning who was shot shot over a routine traffic stop. I, I know you've seen the video by now. I know you see the tussle. I know you saw he grabbed the officer's taser. But what you also saw, he was running and the police officer shot him. Becomes a wonder. Becomes a, a wonder for anybody who watches that video what gives the police officer the right to shoot somebody as they run over a routine traffic stop? Over someone who was drunk. That's what he was. He was drunk and fell asleep at Wendy's. And just because he was drunk and fell asleep and a routine police stop should have not cost him his life. We find that we're still yet mourning another brother. And so even though we are harassed, even though we are killed by the police community, even though in the highest office of this land we can be called thugs and hoodlums, I come by to remind somebody that we still should have hope. 
I, I know things don't look good and I know we're still in a pandemic and even the pandemic can cause one to lose hope because still if you are African American you're still three times likely more than a white person to die of COVID-19 and while all of this has caused conflicting times I don't know about you but I still have hope. Wow, it looks dreary. Wow, it looks dark. Wow, it doesn't look like tomorrow is going to be promising. I still have hope. I still have hope because the songwriter reminds me my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. And I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but I wholly lean on Jesus' name. It is on Christ. The solid rock that I stand at all of the ground is sinking sand. And I come by to remind somebody as we look at this particular text in the book of Romans. This is the prayer of Paul in our text. He is speaking to Jews. He is speaking to Gentiles. He's addressing the church in Rome. And he's reminding them of this great opportunity to have hope in Christ Jesus. And that's the body of Christ. We have every reason to trust in God when things seem volatile, when things seem to be swift, when, seem, when things seem to be changing, when things seem to have no hope. That's when we can and yet, in fact, pull even deeper and trust even harder in our God who can turn things around, who can shift things. And so Paul prepares to close out this epistle to the church in Rome with a prayer. And he says, now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. See, the reason I still have hope, Brother Bird, I, I still have hope is because this verse teaches me that I can still have hope because God is the source of hope. Uh, see, Paul said, now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace. I, I, that's my first point this morning is God is the source of hope and because God is the source of hope, he has the ability to fill us when we are empty. He has the ability to fill us when we're destitute. He has the ability to fill us when sorrows uh, continue to rise. He, he, he fills us and if we just lift up our heads in this particular time, we will in fact be like the psalmist. We'll know where all our help comes from because in adversity and in trial, I have found that that's when God does some of his best work because when God is our foundation, uh, we have a base. We have an infrastructure that is undergirded with and is predicated upon the God of this great universe. The God who spoke and it came into existence. The, the God who is the God of heaven and, and earth. Uh, uh, the Hebrew would simply say he is in fact the El Shaddai. He is the Almighty One. He is the self-sufficient one. He is God and God all by himself. He is the one who was, the one who is, and the one who is to come again. He is our reason for being. He is the hope in which we have for tomorrow. He's the one that Paul says, in him I live, I move, and I have my being. And this is why I still have hope. When I say that the Lord is our source of hope, it is apparent because God is the origin of hope. God, God is the object of hope. It is God who inspires hope and imparts hope uh, unto the children of God. Uh, the Bible says uh, the God of hope fills us. Uh, I don't know about you, uh, but that's what gets me happy uh, when I think about what God does, uh, even though when I can't sense it, even when I can't detect it, even when my mind can't comprehend it, uh, God has a way in the spirit uh, to fill us with hope. Uh, for when the God of hope fills us, uh, we cannot help uh, but have joy. We cannot help but have peace. Sometimes the world looks at us and they wonder how we can have joy. Because like the songwriter also sang, this joy I have, the world didn't give it and the world cannot take it away. They don't understand why we can still smile, why we can still hold our head up, why we can still push on. It's because the God of peace that surpasses all understanding is keeping us in Christ Jesus. 
So when we have hope, hope fuels our faith. Hope and faith, they're very closely tied together. And they work together, they work in tandem to give the disciples of the Lord the ability to move forward despite tragic events. It gives us the ability to believe in a better tomorrow despite a depressing present. When we acknowledge God as the source of our hope, uh, when things look like they are going to come to an end, uh, we know that that's when God does his best work because God has the final say-so. The psalmist declares in the 16th division of the psalm, he would say it this way, Thou will show me the path of life in thy presence is fullness of joy and at your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. More. This is why as a child of God, I still have hope because he, and when I praise him, the fullness of joy can be felt wherever I may be. This is why I trust in the Lord for everything that I need because the psalmist says in his right hand are pleasures forevermore. In other words, he is not short of resources. God will supply all of our needs according According to his riches and glory. I don't know what you may need this morning, but I still have hope because he can bless you financially. He can bless you mentally. He can bless you emotionally. Whatever you need, God can do it. That's why he declared unto Moses, I am that I am. In other words, whatever you need me to be, I am. This is why as a child of God, we ought to have hope. Because those who are in the world, they're robbed of their joy. Because they are hopeless. Because what fills them is only temporary. What fills them is fleeting. What fills them is only temporal. They can't see a way out. And when you can't see a way out, that ought to be a time in which the child of God can declare, I have hope. Because we know who has, the, who has tomorrow in his hands. We know the way out and because we know who the way out belongs to. In other words, he's the avenue. Jesus says, I am the door. In other words, he is the one that can bring us through. However, I, don't, I, I, I not only still have hope because God is my source. This one verse teaches me that I can still have hope because I am being filled by the God of hope. I'm going to be saturated in hope. Did you hear what I just said? That he's not only my source of hope, but he saturates me in hope. Look what the word of God says. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope. Let me help somebody out. To abound in hope comes from from a Greek word, uh, parasio. Uh, and parasio simply means uh, to exceed. Uh, it means to abound. Uh, it means in abundance. Uh, it means overflow. Uh, so when the God of hope fills you, uh, you can't help be but be saturated in hope. Uh, because when God feels, uh, he feels in abundance. Uh, when God feels, uh, he feels in overflow. Uh, it reminds me of this story. You got time for one more story. Is that all right, Sister Candace? I see you shaking your head. I'm going to just digress and give you one more story. There was a man from the city who moved to the country and he bought a farm and he bought a cow. Shortly after the cow was bought, the cow went dry of its milk. A farmer who got word that this city guy had moved to the country expressed his surprise. The, the city man said, well, I'm surprised too. I just bought the cow. Well, the man from the city said, I can't understand it. For if there was ever a person who was considerate of an animal, it was me who was considerate of this cow. If I didn't need any milk, Brother Bird, I wouldn't milk my cow. 
If I only needed a quart of milk, I only milked my cow for only a quart. The farmer then explained to that city guy that the only way to keep milk flowing is not to take as little as possible from the cow, but to take as much as possible. Uh, somebody said, Bishop, why are you telling me that story? Well, all I'm trying to say is uh, I still have hope uh, because like David, uh, God anoints my head with oil uh, and my cup is running over. Uh, I'm not going to be satisfied uh, with just getting a little bit from my God uh, because my God uh, owns a cattle on a thousand hills. Uh, my God owns everything. Uh, my God is rich in silver and gold. My God speaks and it is so. And so I'm not just satisfied with just a little bit. When it comes to my God, God exceeds when it comes to joy. God exceeds when it comes to peace. God exceeds when he provides opportunities. The God that I serve is a great big God. And because the, the size of my God, let me just go old school. My God, he's so big, you can't get over him. My God, he's so low, you can't get under him. My God, he's so wide, you can't get around him. That's why I can declare that giants do fall, because my God is a big God. I believe a change is coming to this nation. I believe there's going to be a change coming to the White House. I believe there's going to be a change change coming in police departments. I believe there's going to be a change in men and women's hearts because the God that I serve is a big God. The God that I serve is not short in responding to the prayers of the righteous. I just declare it like the songwriter declares it. Fill my cup Lord. I lift it up Lord. Come and quench this thirsty soul of mine. Bread of heaven. Feed me till I want no more. Paul, who wrote this epistle, knew about the abundant supply, the overflow of hope that comes in serving our God. Because he declared, now to him who is able to do not some things, not small things, not little things, but he said, now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according uh, to the power that works in us. Uh, to him be glory uh, in the church uh, by Christ Jesus uh, to all generations. Uh, he says forever uh, and ever. Uh, amen. Uh, in other words, so be it. Uh, it's settled in heaven. Uh, when God speaks a thing, uh, so it is. Uh, ain't he all right? Uh, he's all right. Uh, I still have hope uh, because I'm saturated with hope. I still have hope because he is the source of my hope. I'm through y'all. And may the Lord bless you. Real, 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 real good. I still have hope because the Spirit gives me power to have hope. See, this verse concludes that way by the power of the Holy Spirit. See, this is why we don't understand why we can be content in our soul when everything is falling on down that's all around. Us. It's because the power of the Holy Spirit has descended upon us. That's what I love about Pentecost Sunday. Because God sent his spirit from heaven into our own heart. And he gives us power. Power to walk right. Power to talk right. Power to do right. See, the apostle Paul knew the power of the Holy Spirit and how the Spirit can give you power to have hope. He even knew that we might feel weak at times, that while we might have discouragement at times, while we might have sorrow, while we might have trials and tribulations in this world, God is always strong. God is always able to stand by our side. He 
that plays low, I'm with you always, even to the end of this days. See, Paul knew he could always depend on God. He knew God would never leave him nor forsake him. Paul knew the power of the Holy Spirit. He knew that God's power was his constant companion. This is why he said in chapter 8 of the book of Romans, he declared, but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. In other words, God's spirit gives you power. This is why I have hope because like Paul, I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of Christ, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. May the Lord bless you on this week. May the Lord keep you in hope. May the Lord fill you with hope that you might press on. I know you lost some loved ones during the COVID-19 I know some things have changed. I know you lost some. Well, beloved, our time has come to an end. And I'm glad that we're able to have this opportunity to share the word of God. Thank you for participating in this week's episode of Set Your Day in Order. I pray it has been a word of encouragement, a word of empowerment, a word of edification. You can find me here each particular week uh, at the same time as I share what thus saith the Lord. And just perhaps, if you are in the Washington, D.C. area, I would love to see you face to face. I know now we're in a pandemic, uh, but as this too shall pass, if you're ever located in the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area, I want you to stop by the Greater Mount Pisgah Baptist Church. We're located at 1818 Gale Street, in the northeast section of Washington, D.C. Truly, the Greater Mount Pisgah Baptist Church is a church where people experience God's amazing grace. We truly believe that because we are the recipients of his grace. I want to thank you all for your support. You can continue to follow me on Facebook and Instagram and to Twitter. I'm located on all the social medias. and You will find that information uh, uh, on the screen as well as at the end of this series. And so until we meet again, I pray that you would continue to consider uh, financially blessing this ministry if it's been a blessing to you. Until we meet again, may the Lord bless you real, 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 real good.